When an animal is introduced into an ecosystem where it doesn't belong, that ecosystem usually suffers massive negative impacts. Introduced species can hunt and compete with native species, and they can also alter habitats and cause damage to infrastructure and farming. This is of course not the animal's fault as they are simply trying to survive, and in the vast majority of cases, humans are behind their introduction. All continents around the world are affected by invasive species, but in today's video I will be focusing on just two continents, North America and Europe. These two continents are home to a vast array of wildlife, and in some cases they even share some wildlife. Certain species can be found in both North America and Europe, with some great examples being the moose, the northern pike, the red fox, and the brown bear. As well as this, both continents seem to have animals that are very similar to each other, such as the American and European bison, the North American and Eurasian beaver, and the North American and Eurasian otters. Even though the North American and European ecosystems can be quite similar, they are still both home to unique species that could cause problems if they were introduced outside of their native range. There are already plenty of North American creatures that are invasive in Europe, such as the North American beaver, the American mink, the signal crayfish, and the raccoon. Of course this also works the other way around as there are plenty of European creatures that are invasive in North America. Some great examples are the common starling, the European green crab, the zebra mussel, and the brown trout. In this video I won't be focusing on creatures that are already invasive, but instead I will be focusing on certain North American creatures that could cause major problems in Europe. I think certain North American animals would be able to take advantage of weaknesses in the European ecosystem, and if they were introduced they would cause major problems. The first North American creature we will be taking a look at is the coyote. Coyotes are among the most iconic North American mammals, but today in some areas they're seen as a pest. Just like many other intelligent canines, coyotes do very well in urban areas. They can live right under our noses in suburbs and cities and every major city in the US has a coyote population. They are often seen as a negative animal to have around as they will eat garbage and eat pets, but in more rural areas they are a positive creature to have around. They will hunt certain creatures that are seen as pests such as rodents and insects, and they will also hunt more dangerous creatures such as venomous snakes. Coyotes in rural areas are also more shy than coyotes in cities, so they tend to cause less problems. The reason I think coyotes would do so well in Europe is simply because they're so intelligent and adaptable. They could easily live in and around certain European cities, and in these areas they would have little competition. One animal that could stand in their way is the red fox, but this fox is also found in their native North America. When these two species meet in the wild it can get quite ugly, and the coyotes usually displace or kill the foxes. Currently quite a few red foxes inhabit large European cities, and if coyotes were introduced into Europe they would displace them. In their native North America, coyotes have quite a few predators to keep their numbers under control, and luckily quite a few of these predators can also be found in Europe. Golden eagles, wolves, and bears would hunt coyotes in Europe, but of course most of these predators rarely enter cities. This is why I believe they could cause such big problems in European cities, and the raccoon has already proved that North American animals can survive in European cities. The coyote might come into trouble in southeastern Europe, because this is where you can find the golden jackal. This canid is very similar in size and appearance to the coyote, and it would get into a very fierce battle competing with it. So if the coyote was introduced into Europe I think it would cause major problems, but of course it would be extremely unlikely for anyone to try and release this animal outside of its native range. The next North American animal we will be taking a look at is the largemouth bass. The largemouth bass is a carnivorous freshwater game fish, and it's extremely popular with fishermen. It's extremely aggressive and will put up a good fight, and this is one of the main reasons why it's been introduced into many countries around the world. The largemouth bass is famously one of the worst invasive fish in the world, and it's even responsible for some extinctions. They have been blamed for the extinction of the Atitlan grebe in Guatemala, and they have been blamed for the extinction of some small cyprinids in Japan. When you compare the ecosystems of North America and Europe, you can find the most difference in the freshwater ecosystems. North America and Europe share a few freshwater species, but North America has far more predatory fish. 
There are many different species of trout and sunfish, and there are even more prehistoric species such as the gars and bowfin. Europe has its own predatory fish such as perch, pike and zander, and even giants such as large catfish and sturgeon. Despite this, there are far less predatory fish in European waters as there are in North American waters, and this is why the largemouth bass would be such a success in European waters. Strangely, this fish's inclusion on this list is not hypothetical, as it has already been introduced into Europe. Today it's by no means widespread, but it can be found over large areas of Portugal and Spain, which are the two countries that are home to the most invasive fish in Europe. As they face little competition they are spreading at an alarming rate, and many European countries have now been put on alert. So unfortunately this fish's introduction into Europe is not hypothetical, and hopefully it doesn't spread much further. The final North American animal we will be taking a look at is unsurprisingly the American alligator. This giant crocodilian is native to the southeastern United States, and it's one of just two species in its genus. The other is the much smaller Chinese alligator, and this species is also a lot rarer. The American alligator is one of the largest native reptiles in North America, but strangely it also has to battle invasive species. Florida is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to invasive species, and this means that the American alligator has a lot of predators to compete with. In recent years it's had to battle Burmese pythons and caiman, but luckily it usually comes out on top. As the American alligator is the apex predator of its ecosystem, it would certainly cause problems elsewhere. There's no doubt that it would prey on native European species, but the real question is if it would be able to survive in Europe. Even though alligators can survive cold snaps, they need warm weather throughout most of the year. This is why they're limited to mostly the southern states, and this means that they wouldn't be able to survive in most of Europe. Famously, Europe is one of the few continents without any native crocodilians, but there are a few places where they could survive. There are a few warmer wetlands in Spain and Italy, and the American alligator would be quite happy in these areas. They would have plenty of fish to feed on such as the aforementioned Wales catfish, and they would also feed on many of the native semi-aquatic mammals. Of course their young would be taken out by some predators, but once they reach a certain size nothing would be able to take them down. They could become the masters of southern European wetlands, but luckily they wouldn't be able to spread very far north. The only feasible way for an American alligator to make its way to Europe is through the pet trade, and thankfully they are illegal to keep in most European countries. This hopefully means that they will never make their way to Europe because if they did, they would certainly take over some freshwater ecosystems. If you think there's any other North American animals that could have made it in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.